This is the 2008 practical exam paper. We are given a solid for this year and the test begins with a flame test. So I am trying to light the Bunsen burner here to get ready for the flame test. To do the flame test, you need to take the solid sort T as a white solid. You need to pour out a little bit and then coat the splint with T. So you see that I pour it out onto the lid of the bottle so that I do not contaminate the bulk of my solid sort T. So you wet the splint with the Diana's water, coat as much as the solid as you can on the splint. just as much as you can. Then, to do the flame test, you need to turn to a non-luminous flame. Open air hole completely. Then, put the flame at the tip of the triangle. Yeah, at the tip of the small blue triangle. If you wish to, you could repeat the flame test. Just coat again. Do not leave the splint in the fire for too long. Just put it in the fire at the tip of the small triangle, small blue triangle. The first color you see is the color that you want. Okay, so we're not using the Bunsen burner. Close air hole, change to a luminous flame. It's a safety flame. Next, we're going to move on to part B, which is to transfer tea into a test tube. This is about the amount that you would use, you could use. We're going to heat the sample until it melts and then further until no further change. Okay, so you see I heat with a gentle flame first, then after 15 seconds or so, open air hole to get the strong flame. Okay, as the solid T melts, then we get ready for the test. Meanwhile, we pay attention to what's going on in the tube. You can see some condensation happening and then that is the glowing spin test. You see that I leave the spin in the tube for a while even though I have seen that the glowing spin has relaxed. This is because I know that I need the contents of this tube for the later part of the experiment. So I want to ensure that the decomposition is complete. So to know whether it's complete or not, I just need to and I just need to find out if all the oxygen has been given off. Okay, so what's left behind this colorless liquid that you will write down in your observation. Okay, so we're going to keep the tube at the side for part B, for part C. So now, if you don't need a Bunsen burner, you can off it for a while, put it at the side. Okay, the exam, you could wait for a, long, uh, a while more for the tube to cool before you proceed. It's important that if you need the experiment, the, you need the contents to be used at the later part of the experiment, you need to ensure the decomposition is complete. So that was what I was trying to do with the glowing spleen test. I just put the spleen there until it can not glow anymore. Then I know the thermal decomposition is complete. There's no more oxygen given off. That means there's no more of the salt tea that can break down any further. Okay, I'm going to proceed on with C part one, which is to add the Diana's water until the test tube is half full. Okay, so they're about half full. The instructions say to stopper it and then shake thoroughly. Okay, so you stopper and then you shake. When you stopper it, remember to hold the stopper with your finger or your thumb. So you shake to mix thoroughly. We are going on to see part 2 where you need to take 2 cubic centimeters of the solution put into a clean test tube. You could use the dropper that's provided, put about 2 cubic centimeters 
that about that's the amount then we're going to add nitric acid before we add the silver nitrate or the ki sorry so that's the nitric acid that we're going to add about two cubic weeks and evidence as well so every time you add anything you always shake to mix always shake to mix mix well then we're going to proceed on Okay, then you should see some color change. Colorless solution becomes pale yellow. Next, we're going to add the design aldehyde. So that's the design aldehyde, colorless solution. So it says it's about 10 drops or so. And then you'll find that the pale yellow solution now becomes dark yellow. Okay, so that's the dark yellow solution upon adding potassium aldehyde. Then we proceed to add starch solution, 2 to 4 drops. Always shake to mix well and then you get a blue black, dark blue solution. Take another 2 cubic centimeters. this is C part 3, then we're going to add silver nitrate, 5 drops of silver nitrate. Always shake to mix, this is, it looks like a white precipitate. But it's not. It's an off-white precipitate. Aqueous ammonia, still on C part 3. Part D now, we're going to add solid T. So back to solid T. Right, so using a smaller tip, that means you do not use too much of the solid T. Just a tiny amount, put it into a new clean dry test tube, 2 cubic centimeters of distilled water, shake to mix, add silver nitrate, colorless solution remains. Colorless solution remains, and then now we add aqueous ammonia. Colorless solution remains. So that's 2008 practical exam.